Drama, drama, drama. How else could you describe the news conference yesterday held by President-elect Donald Trump? It was his first news conference since he was elected two months ago, and it was contentious, and it was vintage Trump. It was at some point uh, actually more like a reality show as he fought and battled uh, the media, especially CNN, after they did a report talking about uh, the issue of Russian intelligence possibly compromising Donald Trump. He was there with Vice President-elect Mike Pence and their families. Also, the room was stacked with staffers. So when you hear the applause there, that was actually staffers of Donald Trump who he brought into the news conference. It was a raucous affair. Here is some of what took place yesterday at Trump Tower. As far as hacking, I think it was Russia, but I think we also get hacked by other countries and other people. If Putin likes Donald Trump, guess what, folks? That's called an asset, not a liability. Now, I don't know that I'm going to get along with Vladimir Putin. I hope I do, but there's a good chance I won't. And if I don't, do you honestly believe that Hillary would be tougher on Putin than me? Does anybody in this room really believe that? Give me a break. He shouldn't be doing it. He won't be doing it. Russia will have much greater respect for our country when I'm leading it than when other people have led it. You will see that. Russia will respect our country more. He shouldn't have done it. I don't believe he'll be doing it more. Donald Trump also attacked the intelligence community for what he said, leaking uh, the reports of his dossier and that it was presented to President Barack Obama as well as himself. And, of course, he went after vigorously CNN and BuzzFeed for their reporting on this issue. And I think it's a disgrace that information would be let out. Uh, I saw the information. I read the information outside of that meeting. Uh, it's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen, and it was gotten by opponents of ours, as you know, because you reported it, and so did many of the other people. It was a group of opponents that got together, sick people, and they put that crap together. They looked at that nonsense that was released by maybe the intelligence agencies. Who knows? But maybe the intelligence agencies, which would be a tremendous blot on their record if they, in fact, did that. A tremendous blot. Because a thing like that should have never been written, it should never been had, and it should certainly never have been released. Joining us, folks, for, for, via Skype from New York City is Terrell Starr. He's a senior reporter for Fox Trot Alpha. There in the studio on our panel today uh, is William Jawando, former official in the uh, Obama administration, Christian Clark, president and CEO of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, Ralph Chittams, the principal of Black Elephant Consultings, Amber J. Phillips, the co-director of Black. Terrell, I want to go to you first. Uh, I, found it, I found it quite uh, interesting that uh, when Donald Trump was asked at that news conference, it was were there any uh, relations, connections, communications between his st staff and Russian officials? He would not answer that question, Terrell. That is a serious issue. And what's interesting is that Russia previously acknowledged there was communication between them and his campaign team. Well, well let's, first, let's start off with the fact that, look, I've been studying Russia going on 15 years right now. Russia tends not to send wolf tickets. If they say they did something, they tend, they, they tend to not be uh, lying. And the reason being is that they don't care about being caught. That is the whole basis of how R Russia operates. Number two, you know, a lot of this stuff could easily be solved if Donald Trump, uh, President-elect Donald Trump, releases tax returns. Look, I was in, U I was in Ukraine. Just last week, and one of the one of the stories I've been chasing down is one on Paul Manafort and his, and his dealings with uh, Russia and the connection with Trump. And you know, of course, I ran into a number of dead ends. I'm going to keep on trying, but the problem is that when you when you have Buzzfeed and you know who, who released this dossier, for example, and he's upset about it, you know what? Show us your tax returns. Show us where your connections are in Russia, so we can investigate that. So, you know, so, 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 so we can remove all doubt, but he's unwilling to do that because, in my mind, he's hiding something. We can't exactly prove the connections, and most of this is his fault. In fact, yesterday at the news conference, he addressed that issue, and he said, 
I don't need to release my taxes. I won. So he's saying that him winning means he doesn't need to release his taxes. You now have, uh, of course, Congressman Mark Sanford, Republican from South Carolina, who say he should release his taxes because this is going to have an impact on future presidential campaigns. Yeah, and I want to add on something to this, too. What a lot of people in America don't know is the work that we're doing, the questions of chasing down the money. This type of work gets Russian journalists killed. I want to make that perfectly clear. Journalists have died chasing down the kinds of stories that we're being asked to do. So uh, uh, we have colleagues, in, in order for this to work, we also have to have colleagues in Russia who have the freedom to do what we do. Do you really think that this back and forth goes, and goes on between journalists and Putin? No, they find themselves shot in the back of the head. All you have to do is do a basic Google search on journalists killed under Putin to find that out. And I think it's further irresponsible for Donald Trump to, to, to hide this because it makes people assume or believe that he's using Russia as nothing more than a Swiss bank account. Right. All right, Terrell Starr, we surely appreciate you joining us today News News 9 TV. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, let's go to our panel uh, there in D.C. Uh, I'll start with you, Ralph. Uh, it, what is interesting to me, uh, not just on the issue of uh, the taxes in Russia, and so here you have Donald Trump blasting leaks. This is the same guy uh, who mentioned WikiLeaks 164 times throughout the campaign. This is the same guy who talks about fake news, who actually held news conferences where he was lying about President Barack Obama's birth certificate. Uh, and the media uh, was sanctimonious, was actually covering it. I remember one of those news conferences where his plane flew in, that was the backdrop, and he's there talking about how a source called him with amazing information. He was sending private investigators. Who the hell is Donald Trump to complain about fake news when he actually presented fake news about President Barack Obama? Well, fake news is fake news. And, and the fact is that that supposed report was fake news. And trying to tie his tax returns to this report, what does a tax return have to do with a lie that he was in a room with two prostitutes? His tax return... I'll tell you what, the tax return, Ralph, with, Ralph, with, with that Ralph, lie that he was in a room with two Ralph, prostitutes who did something Ralph, disgusting on a bed. But it was Ralph, it's, it's in that dossier, Ralph, 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 in that dossier, it talked about uh, it talked about Russia trying to uh, reach Donald Trump with Russian business opportunities. Donald Trump has said on the record, Ralph, that that his company had no business relations in Russia. Yet his own son said they had extensive business in Russia. Donald Trump, if he releases his taxes and releases who he owes debts to, will give us an indication if that is true or not. So, Ralph, answer that question. How can Donald Trump publicly say that he had no business ties, no business dealings in Russia, yet his own son contradicted exactly what he said? Donald Trump does not manage the day-to-day -day operations of every entity inside of the Trump enterprise. Yes, and, he does. He no, said he, he does. does. But he doesn't. The, the person at the top, like a Donald Trump, does not make every decision for every entity that's under his name. Well, and everybody knows that's true. Well, he, uh, Will Jawando, yeah. I want to... Go, go ahead, Will. I was just going to say, let's jump in. We're not talking about one or two deals. We're talking about the son's quote was money is flowing in from Russia, right? And reporters have known for years, 20 years, that uh, Donald Trump has had dealings in Russia. So the tax returns are relevant because we need to know what those dealings are. They, are, they have risen to the level of a national concern, security concern at this point. No, I'm not because saying that he, we need returns, to know what his dealings right. are. No, I'm Russia. not saying the tax returns Christian. aren't relevant. I'm saying but to try to tie the tax returns to, to that part of the dossier like the gentleman did in the clip, well, th that, that's just, that's just I ridiculous. Think the overall point is that things are being Hey, Christian, Christian. Things. Yes. You know, I Chris, think I want to go to you. I want to I go to you because the head of the uh, Office of Governmental Ethics, uh, Donald Trump yesterday also talked about how he was going to turn his business over to his two sons. He did not say he was going to divest. He did not say it was going to be a blind trust. And the head of the Office of Governmental Ethics said he will be breaking the law on day one as a result of this, that what he has described simply does not satisfy the law. He wants to flout 
and he wants to flout the law and say that he that there are two standards. There's a standard for any other American president, and there's one for him. You know, I think there, there are lots of conclusory statements that are being thrown around. You know, uh, Trump has sold his business. There are no longer conflicts of interest. The reality is that it may take months to really shine a bright spotlight on what's happening here, to really figure out whether or not there are conflicts of interest that are going to create problems for the president-elect to do his job. Um, I think that we're going to have to take some time to just really unpack all of this and figure out whether or not um, President-elect Trump is truly in a position, uh, you know, to, to carry out uh, the duty of running the nation free from all of the current conflicts that we see with all of these business entanglements. Yeah, and the, the other thing to remember, <laughs> Roland, is that this report was commissioned by Republican opposition researchers, so uh, it just was carried on after the election by others. And the idea that you have Donald Trump who's criticized the Pope, uh, in a whole list of long, long list of people, yeah, but he everybody. won't criticize Vladimir Putin, mm -hmm. who's a KGB agent who has people killed. And you have to ask yourself, with all that evidence, why will he not be more forthcoming with one criticism, but two, his dealings in Russia? And those are valid. Amber, questions. we, Amber, we saw yesterday again this raucous news conference. He attacked uh, Jim Acosta, reporter for CNN, mm -hmm. said, "I'm not calling on you." Uh, it went lots of back and forth. Uh, he comes up there, lays out all these documents on a table, saying <laughs> that these are all of the businesses and how we are dive, how uh, turning over to my sons. But then they don't allow reporters to even look at the actual uh, uh, folders. So those could have been blank papers. I mean, th this is Amber. Is this what Americans can expect uh, to see? with President Donald Trump for the next four years? I think um, Donald Trump has truly shown us who he is at this point. Maya Angelou said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. He has shown us that he's not willing to tell the truth. He has shown us he's not willing to be, um, he's not going to cooperate by doing something as simple as turning over his tax reforms. So I think, yes, this is exactly what we're looking at. And it's scary going back to what was just said about what is happening in Russia with the news and how we're not even um, reporters and journalists are scared to chase down issues that are important. And my worry is that with the attack on BuzzFeed, with the attack on CNN, places where we know young people are getting their news, big parts of the American public are getting their news, Donald Trump is calling them fake news. How dangerous is that? Going into an administration that is literally lying to us every day and then getting in front of the, our faces and saying, oh, you know, not really. I didn't mean it. I take it back. Right. Ralph, Ralph, do you believe that what Donald Trump said yesterday by saying, oh, I'll turn over to my sons as if they're going to be running the business, I have nothing to do with it, but he ends it by saying, well, they're not doing a good job, you're fired. That sounds to me like he's going to be over the business. Is Do you believe that he is playing a dangerous game by not divesting himself or putting it to a blind trust and simply saying, hey, America, trust me, he could have foreign governments Literal, and then to say, well, any money from foreign government staying in my hotel, I'll turn it over to, I'll turn it over to the U.S. Treasury. Sure. That is still a violation of the yeah. Constitution. Well, it's also been you know, reported by um, numerous constitutional um, lawyers that it's difficult to create a blind trust for ongoing businesses. Now, if you're talking about, you know, um, passive investment, wait a minute, wait a minute, Ralph. Easy, Don, Ralph but wait a minute, business Trump, is hard to put into a blind trust because the business but, is Ralph, an ongoing entity that has to be managed on a day-to-day. -day basis. But Ralph, the point is this here. If you have Donald Trump's company doing business with foreign entities, he is in violation of the United States Constitution that says no president should be receiving monetary funds from a foreign entity. But he is stepping on... Of course, their he is stepping away from everything as far from, as the management of his... ...was to get rid of ethics. Okay, like, of course he's ahead. going to break these rules. Of course we're not going to figure out the extent of where this is going to go until much later when it's too late. It's now easier to sell off national parks. Like, anything can happen. Let's just own that. Donald Trump is lying. Christian, there, there is a Christian as, a, as a lawyer, as a lawyer, Christian, if the president of the United States is receiving monetary funds from a foreign entity, he is in violation of the United States Constitution. 
There is a provision of the Constitution that we uh, don't hear about much, uh, the Emoluments Clause uh, provision of the Constitution, which prohibits precisely what you just said, Roland. And I think that it's a provision we're going to be hearing a lot more about over the course of the next four years. I think there, this is a moment that really requires that we shine a bright spotlight on what's happening with this president, both inside president-elect, both inside and outside the White House. Uh, I think you're exactly right. This is a, ma a matter of um, national importance, but has implications for how we deal with other countries around the world. But the All emoluments right. clause, let's put it, you know, let's really underscore it, a word we're going to be hearing a lot about in the years and, ahead. And the lawyer that, um, I All right, first, hold tight one second. Louis I got to go to a break. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.